the mughal dynasty 1529 ce to 1857 ce babar babar the king of kabul was a descendant of the powerful mongol conquerors timur and chenghis khan in 1524 ce he was invited to invade india by daulat khan lodi to help him overthrow ibrahim lodi the sultan of delhi babar overtook punjab and in 1526 ce defeated ibrahim lodi in the first battle of panipat babar was then proclaimed the emperor of hindustan he was the first mogal emperor and the founder of the mogal rule in india babar died in 1530 ce his memoir tuzuk e baburi or babar nama is an invaluable source of information which tells us a lot about babar's life and achievements humayu humayu babar's eldest son succeeded him as the mogal emperor in 1530 ce his empire stretched from kabul in the west to bihar in the east from the himalayas in the north to gwalior in the south but it was an unstable and weak empire he was a capable soldier but a poor general humayun and sher shah in 1540 ce sher khan an afghan chief defeated humayun in the battle of chosa and in the battle of kanauj and occupied the throne of delhi in 1540 ce under the title of sher shah between 1540 ce and 1545 ce sher shah conquered malwa rajputana multan sindh and punjab in 1545 ce he died in an accidental explosion of gunpowder within 10 years of sher shah's death humayun recaptured delhi and agra in 1555 ce but died shortly afterwards humayun died in 1556 ce he was a learned man well versed in various languages and subjects his sister gulbadan wrote his biography humayun nama which is a valuable source of information akbar akbar the eldest son of humayun was one of the greatest rulers of india he succeeded humayun to the throne in 1556 ce at the age of 13 bairam khan humayun's experienced general became akbar's regent and looked after the affairs of the government on akbar's behalf in 1560 ce at the age of 18 akbar assumed absolute power he embarked on a policy of conquest and annexation aiming to bring the entire country under his control Akbar's conquests in 1562 CE Akbar annexed Malwa the ruler of Malwa Baz Bahadur was later on given a high post in Akbar's court In 1564 CE Akbar captured Gondwana despite stiff resistance put up by Queen Durgavati He entered into matrimonial alliances with the Rajputs since he realized that they would be of great help in strengthening and expanding the Mughal empire He married the daughter of the Raja of Jaipur. Chittor, the capital of Mewar, was captured by Akbar's military forces. This was followed by the fall of Ranthambore. By 1570 CE, almost all the Rajput princes had accepted Akbar as their overlord. In 1572 CE, Akbar conquered Gujarat, which was a rich province. He annexed Bengal in 1574 CE to 1576 CE which again was one of the most fertile and richest provinces in India. The conquest and annexation of Bengal brought rich revenues to the Mughal treasury. He conquered Kabul, Kashmir, Kandhar, Lower Sindh and Eastern Baluchistan between 1585 CE and 1595 CE. He conquered the Deccan between 1596 CE to 1601 CE. Akbar's administration. The Mughal administration under Akbar was highly centralized and the emperor's word was law. There were several departments such as the revenue department, military department, legal department and the department looking after the royal household. 
Akbar organized his nobility and army into the Mansabdari system. Under this system, each officer known as Mansabdar had to maintain a certain number of men, horses and elephants according to his rank called Mansab. Akbar also reformed the land revenue system. He was assisted by a group of ministers and officials known as the Nine Gems or Navratnas. The famous Nine Gems were Abul Fazal, Faizi, Abdur Rahim, Tansen, Todar Mal, Birbal, Raja Man Singh, Hamam and Mulla Do Piaza. Akbar's Religious Policy Akbar followed a policy of religious tolerance or Suhahi Kul. He built the Ibadat Khana or Hall of Prayer for religious discussions and invited scholars and priests of all religions to participate in the discussions. In 1582 CE, Akbar formed a new religious order, Din e Ilahi or Divine Faith. The objective was to establish a religious order acceptable to all religions, would eventually promote universal brotherhood and national unity. Social and Cultural Achievements Under Akbar Akbar introduced many social reforms. He prohibited sati and discouraged child marriage. He reformed the educational system by laying emphasis on secular subjects. He encouraged writers and artists. Abul Fazal, Akbar's court historian, wrote Akbar Nama in Persian. During Akbar's reign, Tulsidas wrote Ram Charitamanas. Many buildings were constructed under Akbar's patronage. He founded a new city near Agra and called it Fatehpur Sikri. Some of his well-known buildings are Buland Darwaza, Panch Mahal, Ibadat Khana and Agra Fort. Akbar died in 1605 CE. With his death, the most glorious period of Indian history came to an end. Jahangir Akbar's son Jahangir ascended the Mughal throne in 1605 CE. Jahangir did not introduce any significant changes in the administrative system and continued pursuing Akbar's policies. He conquered Mewar and Kangra but lost Kandhar to the Persians. In 1611, Jahangir married Nur Jahan. She was ambitious and soon became the power behind the throne. However, after Jahangir's death in 1627 CE, she retired from public life. Jahangir was a benevolent and just ruler. He was a nature lover and a scholar of zoology, botany and medicine. He was also a great patron of painting, music and architecture. Jahangir died in 1627 CE. Shah Jahan Jahangir's son Shah Jahan ascended the Mughal throne in 1628 CE and ruled till 1657 CE. Shah Jahan was determined to consolidate the Mughal Empire by bringing the Deccan under his control. The three important states in the Deccan were Ahmadnagar, Bijapur and Golconda. All of these states accepted the suzerainty of the Mughal Emperor. He is remembered for the magnificent buildings he constructed. The most famous is the Taj Mahal in Agra. His reign is considered to be the golden age of the Mughal Empire. It was politically united, economically prosperous and culturally vibrant. Mughal Architectural Gems Taj Mahal Agra Red Fort Delhi Jama Masjid Delhi Moti Masjid Agra Aurangzeb Shah Jahan's son Aurangzeb ascended the Mughal throne in 1658 CE. During his 50-year reign, the Mughal Empire became the single largest state India had ever known. However, he faced many rebellions from various groups and out of the different groups, the Marathas posed a serious challenge. Under the leadership of Shivaji, the Marathas established an independent kingdom in Deccan which became a major military threat to the Mughal authority. Aurangzeb was an ideal person in many ways. His policy of discrimination on grounds of faith made him unpopular. However, he was unsuccessful as a sovereign. He died in 1707 CE.
Decline of the Mughal Empire By 1707 CE, the Mughal Empire extended from Kashmir in the north to Jinji in the south and from the Hindu Kush in the west to Chittagong in the east. After Aurangzeb, his successors were weak and inefficient. The last of the Mughal emperors in India was Bahadur Shah Zafar II, who ruled from 1837 CE to 1857 CE. By the mid-18th century, the Mughal Empire slowly disintegrated. As the rulers were incompetent, the nobles who were divided into factions exerted great control over their rulers. As a result, invaders like Nadir Shah of Persia and Ahmad Shah Abdali of Afghanistan repeatedly raided Delhi, the Mughal capital, and left northern India in ruins. The Mughal Empire had lasted for over three centuries. Its decline led to intense rivalry among various ambitious powers to fill the political vacuum. The struggle ended with the victory of the British who ruled India for nearly 200 years.